Hey, Pulse, good afternoon, everybody. This is Sports on News. I'm Jeff Borgen. This is going to be the video on the Calgary Flames, like we did with some of the other teams. Please go check them out on their off seasons and their top prospects and their UFAs and also some RFA talk as well. As now, Trevling is the GM of that team, and of course, the great Daryl Sutter is the head coach. There's a lot of big decisions to make in Calgary that are going to affect their immediate future of how much of a Stanley Cup contender to compare to. I think they're definitely going to be a playoff team next year. They actually are. Noah Hannafin's developed swimmingly on both ends of the puck. Definitely better of an overall defenseman than I think most, including myself, thought he would be a couple years in the past, where I thought his offensive game would continue to develop immensely, but becoming a great steal at 4.95, just as Rasmus Anderson's a great steal at 4.5, and Yusuf Olamaki is a good steal at 1.5. So traveling um, and his team, as well as the other general manager, I'm blanking on his name beforehand, that signed some of these contracts. Definitely did a very good job. Shylington's an RFA. I would assume he's going to get paid at least three something with how well he developed this year. So if you get him below that, another very good steal of a contract. And Tucker Pullman, um, <clears throat> not Tucker Pullman, excuse me, Colton Pullman. He's a solid fill in defenseman. He's a cheap RFA. Connor Mackey's a guy that they have that's going to continue to develop. I'm excited to see what he can do in a full season with Daryl Sutter. Uh, definitely a guy that was a very smart, a uh, good. Uh, UFA um, pickup when they picked him up, I believe, was in maybe 19? Or no, that was... Do, 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 when did they pick him up? No, that was actually way more recently. Signing day was September of uh, 21, so I don't know why I thought that was that much longer ago. But either way, Connor Mackey's definitely a very good developing defenseman. For their UFAs, I would say their biggest concern is obviously Johnny Goudreau, but it seems like Johnny Goudreau at this point is probably because of the money he's going to be owed now with committing to the best two-way play he's had, which even makes him even more coveted after being a plus 64 this year, having an immense amount of points, being the best he's ever been in both zones. I would think he's going to end up moving on. Dorn Croak. He's obviously a guy that's great both ways. I think that's a guy that I could see them keeping because Daryl Sutter obviously probably adores him. Carpenter's a great face-off guy, a cheap guy to keep for that. Uh, Gowden might have some more, a little bit potential in that blade, so you might as well just keep him on the cheap. Same goes with the Kirklands and like the Phillips of the world. They're all cheap. You might as well keep them because they might maybe spark into at least a bottom six guy for you. Um, the, kind of the same thing goes with D. Simone. Andy Walensky already is kind of like an eighth defenseman, so you might as well keep him around. Um, Gabranson, they definitely should keep if they can. He's going to probably want like three something, like mid threes now, with how good of a season Daryl Sutter was able to kind of turn him into. But if you're able to keep him like two, eight to at most three for three, I would debate doing that because he seems to fit perfect with Daryl Sutter now getting him not to go out of position and just be a great shot blocking guy that blocks the blue line and really does better at not letting guys ever get into his own zone kind of like a la Truba but also when we look at Nikita Zadorov, I think him being 27 having one of his best seasons that's a guy they're going to try to keep it's going to be interesting though a former first round pick he might decide to say because of how good he does with Sutter's system, but I think he also is a guy that could do well with a team that has money like the Kings, who are going to continue to try to get their defense and get guys that are very good at blocking out the blue line, blocking shots, and doing stuff like Zadorov is now able to do. Sorry, I was killing a bug. Uh, Zadorov was able to do um, this season and really develop better into. He's also got gradually better. He wasn't good in his first couple years yet, other than at just hitting guys but still getting out of position with the Avalanche. But his final year, he was good. He was actually solid in Chicago as well. He played good for Russia, and then with the Flames, he also is playing immensely well. So he seems to be trending in the right direction, just a late bloomer in his mid-20s. Wasn't necessarily worth that first-round pick snag, but is becoming a very sexy, solid defenseman in terms of shot blocking and knocking guys as soon as they get into the zone. So I would say Nikita Zadorov is a guy that should try to keep but I think it's going to be tough for them to be able to actually keep him. And I think he's a guy that's going to probably go elsewhere and continue to trend in the right direction for somebody else. In terms of the prospects, they got good guys. And Pospisil, who's very close, uh, probably will make the team next year, honestly. Uh, Connor Zare, who's very close as well. Uh, Emilio Pedersen, who's also very close. Pospisil and Pedersen might make it just because of... NHL fully ready their body-wise and being kind of more grown into their 
game at the age of 22 going on 23 compared to Zari that's just 20. Uh, Itu Torola as well is a guy that might be able to become a solid uh, guy that's in a top nine for you somewhere. But another thing that I like about the Flames is that I mentioned with a lot of teams as well, because I love talking about goaltenders, they have Ladar, who's a very good backup, a very good potential 1B in the making as well. Now a very good backup that plays, twenty, say, 23 to 30 games in a season. But Markstrom also is Vezina, a contending late bloomer that started to get better and better as he entered his 30s. And maybe Tyler Parsons over time, maybe he's a late bloomer. But Dustin Wolf is obviously... I picked that 214 is becoming a great pick. And the guy is going to be uh, continued very interesting to watch. As well as uh, Sergeev and the other Czech kid that uh, Danil, uh, that's uh, very hard to pronounce his last name. Uh, Chesterlev, I think is how you pronounce his last name. But he's closer to the NHL than the other guy that they picked in last year's draft at 205 in Sergeev. But... They picked two Czech kids, obviously, in net. They have Ty Parsons, Dustin Wolf. They have, of course, the kid that they were able to get with Adar from Boston, which I think is working out very well for the Flames because I think he has a chance to become a 1B, and they might not even need that. He might end up becoming a 1B and then getting moved because of the two Czech kids they have, plus Dustin Wolf, and then they have him developing behind Markstrom, assuming Markstrom can continue to stay healthy and kind of be that guy that ages well because he's a late bloomer and ages like a fine wine into his 30s. But everybody have a great, safe, and pleasant day. This has been a quick video on the Calgary Flames offseason, their top prospects, and key UFAs that they got to look out for. Obviously, Drew Drew's the chaos, but I think he's going to end up being moved on from just because of money. Money matters, and money issues kind of overrule that situation. Peace out, everybody. Stay safe. Please subscribe down below. Up above on the easy-to-use widget. You can channel to the goal of 260 or more by the start of July.